Right guys, so John's now taking me around the back of the building where they do all the EDH courses and the STCW basic safety training courses, so the firefighting and um, I guess you do, do you do the medical here as well? I know the medical is actually up, uh, upstairs in the uh above the workshops and that's right okay we can well, actually, okay so maybe we can go and see that okay so what do we have here then so this is our uh, basic firefighting uh, simulator so it's it's five shipping containers organized subdivided it's got furniture inside it we fill it up with artificial smoke and the students have to learn the basics of operating in zero viz with with breathing apparatus they have to uh, recover a casualty and eventually um, on the Wednesday afternoon, which is this afternoon, they work there where they have to search through the lower area, then they have to go up a ladder and extinguish a fire, which is up there in the, in the higher container. Okay, so you actually yeah. do have live fires in yes, the containers? Yeah, 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 okay. it gets jolly hot. Yeah, I can well. imagine it does, yeah. So, uh, I actually did my, what did I do? I did my refresher here actually. Did you? Last year, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's quite yeah. warm. Yeah, fantastic, okay. So let's have a walk around. I don't think there's anyone in there at the moment. Uh, probably not. Have a look. It's a bit. It's a bit dark. Is it too dark? It's too dark. Yeah. So we're. Yeah. So basically, got, uh, it's a little bit light. So you got this, the ladder going up there. So the the BA team will go up the ladder, yeah. and I guess the fire will be on top of the deck head here. That's right. So they have to use correct ladder procedures because so you don't just go up and down ladders willy nilly. Yeah. So we we train that at that point. They go in. They attack the fire staying as a team, uh, but then we actually let them all take in turns, turns yeah. to, uh, but which obviously you wouldn't normally do. Then they return and, and make their escape. Right. The idea is that they get out before the whistle blows on their BA set. Sometimes they're just approaching the exit by the time the whistle goes, but that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a bit about this platform that you built well, this here. Is, this is basically is, is to simulate the sort of the types of uh, things you might encounter in, a, in an engine room for example so they have to go up here work the way along they can't see what they're doing so they have the first person to go through has to tell the others what he's just encountered because they'll perhaps come around on a left hand search so they have to keep their left hand in contact with the bulkhead yep. then they'll find this with, with their feet yep. and then they'll tell the other students and then they'll uh, go up, work their way through, come down the other side, and it's all about communicating effectively so that nobody gets surprised and trips over. Exactly. And we've got obviously obstacles that you wouldn't probably have a fridge on the floor in your engine room, but but we've got various obstacles uh, for them. And to little holes to go through access yeah, points. Yeah, little, yeah. Perhaps we can see those a bit better around the other side. Okay. If we, uh, if we open so the other door. Do we need to close this door? Or leave it open for now. Open okay. So here guys, you see they have all the BA kits here, all set up, all the different points of the BA, uh, the mask there, come around, some LSA equipment there. Yeah. Bonjour, yeah. how are you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Right, so, so what do we have in here? So this is uh, another, another sort of setup, we've got bunks in there so we can offer accommodation to our students. <laughs> I don't know if you can see in the light, but there, there are three holes that allow you into the into the lower uh, into the other. So that's containers. that's just where we've been. So yeah, it comes right. through here. So, so getting through the, the cabin the on is obviously something else to, 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 that you need to practice in, and it's all about communicating to the other team members that you're through and that you're going through, and manoeuvring. And if you're going to get a casualty through there, that's uh, it's also uh, yeah that's... something that. That's going to be interesting. Uses up a lot of air. Oh yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. And over here, you got some life jackets. I so see you got a life raft opened up there. Yeah. It's all so this is part of the sea survival it's all training. The, uh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Immersion so suits. We've got a yeah, and a, this is our a choice of dummies. Uh, we've got a child dummy. Adolescent dummy, and there's a slightly bigger dummy there, which is quite heavy. Yeah. To, to evacuate. Um, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And then the here, I know here in um, on Teeb for the sea survival training, you do it at the local on Teeb uh, swimming pool. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so you yeah. guys have a special contract with them. Yeah, or? we have a contract with the pool, and we go. I mean, we're, we're basically there pretty much every week during yeah. the, the training season. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and obviously in Florida, we've got, they've got their own pool, so they, they don't need to do that. 
and they're warmer there as well. As well, I remember I did my refresher in February. It was a, well, the pool's heated, but it was when you got yeah, out, it was quite chilly. Cheesy. I think they should chill it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put some ice cubes in there. Yeah. yeah. So this is we've got an outside area for the for the five ground out here. So this is okay. where we do the hose runs and the hose drills. Right. Um, and. Uh, that's the so do, do you pressurize your fire hoses here? Do you have a pressurized point, a fire hydrant? Uh, we, we have a pump over here. So oh, okay, yeah. So the, the hydrant's actually here, and uh, that's okay. what provides the, uh, the power pressure. The, uh, yeah. For the hoses, so we can have two uh, two hoses uh, running off that. We've also got an emergency fire pump that can be used uh, as well. And here you have all your oxygen for your, uh, your air, oxygen. your compressed for air, sorry, compressed air for your yeah. BA teams. But, yep. uh, yeah. Yeah the full ones and the empty ones and the students have to sort of manage that they have to charge the cylinders themselves they have to Perfect. build the, build the, uh, the BA set up and put the, put the cylinder on themselves which is obviously an important part of the training they need to help each other get dressed yeah. because yeah. a big part of the, the basic course is learning how to support the team that are going to go in and actually fight the fire yeah so uh, it's the outside stuff it's the running the hoses it's um, operating the extinguishers, it's dressing the fire yep. teams and making sure they're safely dressed with no, no skin exposed exactly. and correctly wearing the BA. Taking notes of their air levels and Yeah, so we have a BA commanders. control board down the other end, so they, they have to understand how to operate um, a, uh, the, the, the BA control system so that they know uh, when, if, if the team should be out by now, they can actually, oh, there's a problem because they're not out, so that they would notify the captain and the captain would make a decision about what to do yeah whether they need to send somebody else in or whether you can hear them coming yeah this will get easier actually because the uh, they've changed the rules now so that the ba teams have to wear radios yep so we're in the process of acquiring radios to use with the ba yeah which means that the uh, person at the, uh, the 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 actual person controlling the, uh, the the scene yes will be able to talk directly to the we we have the radios the on board they're yeah. the um explosion proof um that's right i can't what they're called now but when we've got like icom so we yeah. have one, the on-scene commander has one, and then the two, we've got a two-man BA team, so they've yeah. got the other, and it's connected straight to the BA yeah. mask as it's well. It's already the law that you've yeah. got to have it. Yeah. What they haven't done is actually change the fire course uh, to, to keep up with to. that training. Okay. So we're actually in anticipation of that by getting the, okay. the radios. And by the end of the year, hopefully, I know there's a, our head of safety um, is going up to a meeting at the Chamber of Shipping um, in, oh, wow. in, in a week or so okay. to actually start the process of redefining the fire course. So that's, they're using all the people from all the colleges that actually deliver the training wow. to, to talk about the, uh, the actual that's, redefined motion training board they standards. They have to, yeah. 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 So yeah, hopefully the new training standard will be out very soon. Okay. Uh, but we're starting to, we're going to start to use them from the autumn as soon as we get our radios in place. Okay, fantastic. Great. And what else do we have out here? I mean, there used to be the uh, EDH. They did the wire splicing in one of these containers, right? Yeah, it's probably locked. Yeah, it's locked. Okay, Not no problem. Get that out. Yeah, so we've got uh, a few tenders. I'll show you inside this one. Great. So we've got a cooker for the uh, uh, for, on fat fire. We practice using the uh, fire blanket on that. Yeah. A little electrical box for use of CO2 extinguishers to deal with electrical fire. Yep. And then in here, we have a choice. Uh, we've got this uh, gas tray which uh, we use for hoses, so they'll come in with hoses, we'll put foam on it. Right. Uh, we can also put uh, class A in here, we can put wood fires in here okay. if, if we want to, to actually show the, uh, the effect of using uh, the extinguishing media on the different on class types. A, yeah. uh, which is an important part of the, that's what all those crates there, those, those pallets there, uh, are our class A material that we chop up and burn. Okay. All right, <coughs> and then all these extinguishers are they donated to the school? No, we we buy. We're actually due, we're going to buy a whole new load okay. uh, over the summer, um, but we usually buy them um, because uh, they do take quite a lot of use. Yeah, and uh, we have to keep them churning around. Those are sort of at the end of their life now, so we're getting a whole raft of new ones. Right. So we generally we do get given extinguishers. Yeah. Um, and so. If they're reasonable, we can we can use them. But most of the extinguishers we use, we we actually maintain and we send them to a local servicing agent um, to to keep them up to level. But it's yeah. it's, it's it's time for us to change them. Yeah, around. you must be using them on a weekly basis, every I guess. Week, yeah, every during week. the training yeah, season, yeah, yeah. Every so week. They, they get a lot of use. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I see over here we've got the classic pilot boiling letter. 
Yeah, so this is, uh, this is part of the EDH? That was, that was uh, given to us here. We don't let anyone climb up it, but it's just to show people uh, what, the, uh, what, a, what a, a, a type of proof pilot ladder is. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the larger yachts will actually have them. There's our emergency fire pump that I was talking about earlier, it actually runs. Um, and we have a wheel extinguisher. Yes. We're required to have, because it says on the list of equipment, for the fire courses that we must have a wheeled extinguisher. There is no learning outcome connected to the wheel extinguisher, but we are required to have it. So okay, we have it. They have it. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, fantastic. Okay. So this is the uh, basic training classroom. So we've got elementary first aid, so we've got uh, medical mannequins uh, and uh, charts on uh, over there. So the, the first aid tends to happen in, in this area. Um, we've got uh, uh, personal survival techniques theory that happens in here. So we've got the contents of the life raft and the emergency uh, emergency notices, etc. We do personal safety and social responsibility, um, and uh, um, yeah, first aid. The the fire theory will, yeah. will happen in here as well. So yeah. Yeah, and the so refresher courses in here as well, yeah, right? So yeah, so it's all the theory stuff related. Th this classroom is dedicated to all the basic, the, the safety courses and their refreshers, basically. Got all your handheld flares, <laughs> rocket flares, you've got smoke hoods, you've got SARTs, EPIRBs, all the safety equipment we have to carry on board. Uh, medical kits, you've got your drogue for your life raft, yeah. paddles. Um, very important thing, guys, is the seasickness pill when you get into a life raft, because they are very grim places to be in at sea. I suggest you take the seasickness pill before yeah. you get into the life raft, <laughs> otherwise you'll be looking for it in the bottom of the life raft yeah. after you've thrown up. Yeah. <laughs> got some uh, nozzles here for the fire hoses, got some fire hoses there, extinguishers, all the equipment, you've got your smokes here as well, guys. So when you, if you do your courses here at Blue Water, they'll teach you all this equipment, how to use it and when to use it. This is the foot pump here or hand pump to pl blow up the um, life raft and the, the plugs are used in case of any, um, you know, any damage done to the raft while launching or, or using time on board. And this is a heliograph signaling mirror. So that's it. It's very, they got everything you need in the school um, from basically from entry level, if you want to come in and you're green in the industry, you want to get your basic safety training done, your ENG one done. And like uh, John mentioned earlier, if you want to go down the engineering routes, you know, you want to do your AEC course as well. And they go all the way up to, to master's level. And uh, why, do you get up to Y1 for the yeah. engineers? Up to well, Y1. There's no training for Y1, but we, but we do all the training. All the training. Right? So it, it, here in Blue Water, they do everything. For me personally, I did from the beginning, I did all my OW courses with Blue Water right here. And then after, I think it was two or three years, I then did all the master modules here at Blue Water. And I still need to do my final Master 3000 oral exam in the UK. But uh, highly recommend it, guys. Fantastic school, fantastic facilities. You know, I, I had no complaints. I would say predominantly from the master's point of view, the instructors are mostly master mariners from the Merchant Navy and from the Royal Navy. Is that right? Yeah, but we're getting some... Uh, um um, masters of yachts uh, on the on the um, on, on that's the road right. I think was it, is it Richard? Not Richard. Who was the chap that did my business and law? It he was, was uh, Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, who's been a very large yacht okay, he, I think he he drove. Um, was it Anna? I think he drove. I think right. he's had a couple of big yacht drives. Yeah, of he course, has, he's, a, he's a cruise ship master. Yeah. So so uh, he's he's he's. Uh, yeah, he's quite an asset actually, but all our instructors are. We've, I'm yeah. very lucky with the, the yeah. team of instructors that I've got, but we have got some coming through now that have been, uh, that have actually worked on, on, on yachts, yachts. That, that actually want to start having a, a family life. Yes, uh, so, Which gets a bit difficult, as you yeah. know. Yeah. So uh, we've got uh, a, a couple of um, uh, captains who, who are starting to work through doing the Officer of the Watch modules and the Yacht Master program. Fantastic. Um, so uh, I, I, it's good to have people actually on the training staff who've actually got relatively recent sea experience so that's it's good to have a mix yeah yeah no that's fantastic that's brilliant yeah, especially from the, with my team yeah yeah you got some great instructors here yeah, yeah should fantastic. we show you the hot box let's have a look so you can see the EDH boys are busy we've got the uh, the staging rigged uh, we've got the bollards where they can practice turning up yep it's uh, it's, it's, I, can, I think EDH is a, is a safety course. It's a course that I think people should do almost as soon as they've done 
their basic training. I think they should. I should do it. They should do it straight away. Strictly speaking, you need to have sea time to actually yep. get the certificate. But but actually, uh, especially with this new program that I was talking about earlier, uh, NavWatch rating is going to be part of it. So you'll be doing your the EDH training very early, which means that actually when you start working on a yacht, you've already got the basics of, of how not to kill yourself with a with a, a line yeah. under, under tension. Yeah, exactly. So and snapback zones. And modern ropes have got incredible uh, strength until they fail. Until they, oh and yes. Then they, and then they chop you in half. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's look at. That. So this is gas by looks of it. Yeah, this is uh, we we only use we used to use wood in here, um, yeah. But but it's not ideal because uh, some of the, the the smoke is retained, doesn't all get out of the building. Right. And now that we're doing EDH training here as well, we can't really do that. So yeah. we've got uh, uh, gas with ventilation and gas detectors. Uh, so the, the the advantage of gas it gets very hot very quickly. Yes. Uh, and it's uh, it makes uh, it, it's good for talking about the. Uh, the effect of having a fire inside a, a metal box. Uh, the students yes. get that very. They get the feeling very. very they get yeah. the feeling very quickly. Yeah. So the instructor controls the intensity uh, and duration of the of the flame um, as the as the students are, are putting it out. So yeah. normally, of course, up here when they arrive, it's, it's very hard to see anything. Um, so it's uh, they're, they're, they've just done a search down below. They come up this ladder. We've got we've got the lid on it at the moment because uh, it lets when we're doing exercises down below. It lets too much light down there, so uh, uh, so this is what we do. This is the culmination of the course on day three. So this afternoon, in fact, they'll be the team will be in here doing their uh, uh, doing the final hot air. Yeah. Um, which which some people. And you find get the real experience of what it's like. Yeah. 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 Um, do you do you find it? You know, some people, although it's in a very controlled environment, they simply just shut down and realize this is not for them. Or do, yeah. you, do the majority of people... Some people struggle even putting the mask on and breathing yeah. the, uh, the, the compressed air. Yeah. Uh, so we, we have to... Uh, uh, it's very rare that we yeah. can't get through somebody through the course, uh, provided they're, they're trying. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, there, there's every... Some, some, some students want, it, want us to wrap up the heat and make it uh, much hotter. And others uh, are, are not happy. Kind of taking a so step we back. Have to, we have to hit a, the, the objective of this course is not to provide thrills. The objective is to is to provide learning. So, yeah. so we have to keep the uh, the balance right. So yeah, they, of course. they actually understand uh, the effect. Like when we put the water on the fire here, they understand how the visibility goes down because suddenly the place is full of steam, yeah. um, etc. Et and then, if, if some students <coughs> just simply are not comfortable doing it? Have you had situations where you won't pass the course for them? That, that, that has happened. Uh, okay. Essentially, if you can't achieve the things that have to be achieved, yeah. then we can't give you the certificate. Now, right. uh, my uh, instructors are really good at dealing with uh, with nervous people. Yeah. So, so if you are a bit claustrophobic, and if this whole thing, uh, with, if it fills you with terror, yeah. uh, we're, we've got a pretty good track record of uh, encouraging yeah. people through it. So we'll, we'll even take somebody out, get them personal coaching, and take them through on their own uh, to, to work with the instructor in order to give them the, uh, the, the, the get confidence them through. to, to achieve yeah. it. Yeah. So, so usually we get people through. Uh, yeah. over. Some people don't enjoy it, some people love it. Yeah. Most people enjoy it, actually. Well, as you know, we I've experienced quite a substantial fire. So uh, yeah. I, know, I know what it's like, and it's absolutely terrifying my you understand my, the difference between uh, doing uh, doing drills oh, and training yeah. and then suddenly having to put it in practice oh yes yeah the, the yeah. speed the, for us especially because we were a grp boat the speed at which it burns and the temperature i mean you couldn't get even close to it no you know it, it, the, the heat and then you realize why these training courses are so important why drilling is so important yeah. why close a simple thing is closing a door behind you as you walk into another area of the vessel why it's so important to contain it um, because when we had the fire on board it was just an absolute disaster well the you problem know, is so, we can only do half the job yeah. in a school we can teach the techniques we can teach the principles 
But what happens on board, board is up to the master. It's our responsibility and, and is to embed it into and, the new crew and do as and many drills as you can. Too many ops, there's no culture of learning. Yeah. Uh, and that is a real yeah. problem for safety. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm, uh, there are some things afoot that may help to, to change that, which I'll talk to you about later. But, okay. uh, but uh, it is a safety issue. Uh, the degree to which some yachts and some merchant ships uh, do lip, pay lip service to their onboard training and drills. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't realise the, the price they're paying until they actually have a real emergency. Yeah, and it is terrifying. Yeah. It's absolutely terrifying, guys. The last thing you want on board any vessel is a fire. Right.